That's tough. Praise the Lord. Now, your thought, the pastor was talking about me. He was talking about you. You are the focused man, the focused woman. And rain, sunshine, wind, whatever does not hinder your purpose of life. You are the faithful one. And the face of Christ in you has made you faithful. Say, I am faithful. I look at your life and I see the fruit of Calvary in your life. You are the fruitful one. Are you fruitful? Where are you? And you are the fearless one. No matter what's happening, no matter what's going on, you have decided to follow the Lord, no turning back, no turning back. And because of that, anywhere you go, when you declare the word of God, I'm sure you're a preacher yourself. Any preacher on ground there, that's a fiery one. And the fire of the Holy Ghost will continue to burn inside your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for this service. Glorious service, global service, combined service together. Lord, I pray everything your people need, you pass on to them today in Jesus' name. Amen. Your people will keep on standing for you. They will not fail. They will not be fearful. They will not fret. And Lord, I pray every purpose you have decided for everyone, you will fulfill in Jesus' name. Make my brother there strong. Make my sister there strong. And nothing will be able to stand before you. That, Lord, everything you have ordained, everything you have planned, I pray every boy, every girl, every young person, every young adult, you will do in their lives in Jesus' name. Lord, be glorified in every life. That everywhere we go, one by one, every village, every city, every town, every state, every local government, and every nation we go, that same fire, and that same fervency, and that same focus you find in everyone in Jesus' name. Help me, help your people, help everyone to stand at the center of your will every time in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. you can see that. We're coming to Matthew chapter 14. And I'm reading from verse 14. Matthew 14, verse 14. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude. And he was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. If you're still sick there today, you'll be healed in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 1. In Mark chapter 8 verse 1, In those days the multitude being very great, and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples unto him and says unto them, verse 2, it says, I have compassion on the multitude because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. In verse 3, it says, and if I send them away fasting to their own houses, they will faint by the way for divers of them came from far. We're looking at Luke chapter 9, verse 11. And in Luke chapter 9, verse 11, it says, And the people, when they knew, they knew it, 
they followed him and received, and he received them and spake unto them of the kingdom of God. He spake unto them. He proclaimed the word unto them. He preached the word unto them. After that, he healed them that had need of healing. As we look at those verses and those chapters today, we're looking at Christ's compassionate healing and provision of food. Christ's compassionate healing and provision of food. There are three things we're looking at as we consider that. Number one, the compassionate healing of the sick by Christ. The compassionate healing. He healed because he had compassion. And that compassion is still there today. The compassionate healing of the sick by Christ. Number two, the considerate provision of food through his care. He cared so much. And he still cares today. And because he cares today, he is considerate. And he provides, it is being considered, he provides food because he cares. Number three, the composite health plan. Health care. Health program. He has a composite health program, health plan for all saints under his covenant. Let's come to number one. Number one is the compassionate healing of the sick by Christ. As we consider the healing of Christ through his compassion, we look at three things. Number one, number one, the promise of healing by the compassionate Christ. Number two, the progress of the healed with constant Consecration. And number three is the preservation of health by or and complete kill. Look at number one. Number one is the promise of healing by the compassionate Christ. He promised that he will heal. And he is a faithful Christ. And he is the unlimited, the unchanging Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. What did he promise he will heal? Matthew chapter 8, reading from verse 7. And Jesus says unto him, I will come and heal him. I will come and heal him. Him. He was talking to the centurion that came to him, the captain that came to him, the convert that comes to him, the Christian that comes to him, anyone that comes to him today, the impartial Christ who always says the same good, positive practical sin to everyone who comes he says the same thing jesus says unto him as he says unto her as he says unto them as he says unto us as he says to everyone on the face of the earth if you will only come i will come and heal him this day He'll come and heal you. He'll heal your soul. He'll heal your body. He'll heal you and you'll become every wheat whole in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 22. In Mark chapter 9 verse 22. And of times it cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But... If thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. This was a father, a father of a tormented child, a vexed child, an epileptic child. And he came, he had brought the situation to the disciples of Christ. 
and he could do nothing. And now Christ came. Whatever problems you have tried to solve and they were not solved, Christ has come to you today. And then he came. He didn't give up. You will not give up. You know, something has to give up. Either the man or the malady. But the man will not give up. The malady has to give up. Either the seeker or the sickness, one has to give up. The seeker will not give up. The sickness has to give up. I see somebody there, you will not give up. I said you will not give up. That infirmity, that sickness has to give up. And so the man did not give up and he said, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Verse 23, and Jesus said unto him, and Jesus says unto me, and Jesus says unto you, and Jesus says unto her, and Jesus said unto them there, if thou canst believe. All things are possible to him that believeth. If you can only believe, all things are possible unto you as you believe. I believe. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Hebrews 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Today, this Sunday, 28th of August, 2022. The Lord will be good unto you. Because it's still the same. He has not changed. Look at number two here. Number two here, we're looking at the progress of the healed with constant consecration. We need to understand how the people of that time, how they behaved, how they reacted, how they responded after they were healed. Constant consecration. As the progress of those who are healed. I want you to look at Mark chapter 10, verse 51. In Mark chapter 10, verse 51, and Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The key is in your hand. What you get is what you say. What you say is what you receive. It says, what wilt thou that I should do unto thee? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Look at verse 52. In verse 52, and Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Your faith has made you whole. Amen. It's done already. Amen. Now, what did the man do? What, look at what the man did. We're told in the latter part of that verse, and immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Didn't go back to idol worship. Didn't go back to a nightclub. Didn't go back to the gang. Didn't go back to occultism. Didn't go back to herbalism. Now that the Lord Jesus has healed him, he received the sight and he followed Jesus in the way. That's how they made progress. Those people that were healed by the Lord. It tells us in John chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 51. John chapter 4 reading from verse 51 and as he was now going down his servants met him and told him saying thy son liveth your son liveth your daughter liveth your wife your husband liveth and you yourself you live in good Perfect health in Jesus' name. The man had come to the Lord Jesus 
And this man let his son seek at home at the point of death. And he appealed to Jesus that Jesus will come and heal him. And Jesus said, go your way. Your son, even the man, believed that. When you believe the proclamation of the word of God, you'll be healed. Amen. And then he was going. And the servants met him. And they told him. And they said, things turned around. The spirit of death was cancelled. And your son now lives. Look at verse 52. In verse 52, then inquired he of them. The hour when he began to amend. He had the notion, the idea. He will begin to amend and then he amend gradually. And they said, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. Yesterday. At the seventh hour, at the mention of the name of Jesus, that evil thing will flee from your life. Yeah. Now, the question is now, after they recognized that that was healing from Christ, what did they do? What did they do? Look at verse 53. In verse 53, and the, so the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus says unto him, Thy son liveth. See how they made progress after they were healed. And see how we would make progress after we are healed. And himself believed and his whole house. When the Lord has done something great and something wonderful like that, the thing to do is that you and your house, if you're going to keep the healing and keep the healer with you, is that yourself will not go beyond healing and you come to salvation. And you, your wife, your children, your household, everyone, every one of your dependents, now you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We're looking at chapter 9 of John. John chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 35. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. That's a man that was born blind. And the Lord healed him of the blindness. And he began to talk and discuss with all those uh, masters of the law. And he said, since the world began, we have not heard that anyone opened the eyes of the blind that was born blind. And he has done it for me. And so they, they didn't like that. They wanted to hold on to their false doctrine and their false tradition. And they wanted to hold on to a religion that does not save. So they cast him out. And then we are told, he said unto him, Jesus now found him and said to him, Does thou believe on the Son of God? Verse 36. In verse 36, he answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? Verse 37. Jesus says unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and he is it, it is that talketh with thee. Verse 38, and he said, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Now you see what those people did after they were healed, is that they now accept him as Lord. They take him as Lord, and they worship him as Lord. Look at uh, Luke chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 38. Luke chapter 8, verse 38. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away saying, look at verse 39, return to thine own house and show how great things God has done unto thee. And he went 
his way and publish throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. That's what they did at that time. After they received healing, they didn't just say, Praise the Lord, I got my healing. Anytime there's another crusade, I'm coming back again. And they never talked to anybody. They never touch anybody. They never invite anybody. But you know, he went and he did what the Lord had said. Go. Go back home and tell everyone around how great things Jesus has done for thee. It's, you're not going to tell them how great things Peter has done for me, John has done for me, Apostle has done for me. Whatever apostles manifested, it was through Jesus. And so you'll go and tell them how great things Jesus had done unto me. Look at verse 40. In verse 40, and it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him for they were all waiting for him. That man went around and told everybody, and because he told everybody, all those people were waiting for him, that's what you will do. That you've seen the miracle, you've seen the healing, you've seen the deliverance, and then you'll go back home now, the talk of no more gossip, and no more talking about this or about that other irrelevant thing. You're not talking about Jesus who has saved you. Who has made you whole, who has healed you, who has delivered you from every kind, every form of oppression. Look at number three here. Number three here is the preservation of health and complete cure. After the Lord healed the people, they were not getting sick and getting healed, getting sick and getting healed, getting sick and getting healed. How did they maintain their health? How did they maintain the complete cure the Lord had given them? See the instruction Jesus gave in John chapter 5 verse 14. Afterward, Jesus found, findeth him in the temple, not in the beer pallet. Jesus findeth him in the temple, not in the shrine of an idol. Jesus findeth him in the temple, not in the house of a strange woman. After the Lord that healed him, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more. The grace had come to his life. He got healing, he got grace. He got healing, he got forgiveness. He got healing, he got freedom. He got healing, he got salvation. And the Lord, on the basis of the grace that came to his life, on the basis of the righteousness of Christ imparted unto him, imputed unto him, on the basis of the righteousness from heaven that comes by grace imparted unto him, he said, you are made whole, you are healed, you have not only got healed, you have also got the power to go and sin no more. And so he said to him, sin no more, lie no more, steal no more, deceive no more, fight no more, transgress no more, sin no more, lest it was thin come unto thee. That's how they kept the healing, that's how they kept the complete cure. We're told in Proverbs chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 20, Proverbs Chapter 4, we're looking at verse 20. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Verse 21, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Now you take your Bible. You read your Bible every day. You look at the promises of God every day. The, pro the, 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 the precepts of God every day. The prophecy of the word every day. And you look at what the word has proclaimed unto you. How you ought to live. And you will not allow the word to depart 
from your eyes. What's the result of that? Look at verse 22. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. That is how they maintain the health and the healing that the Lord had given them. Psalm 103, I'm reading from verse 1. In Psalm 103, verse 1, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. In verse 3, it says, O forgiveth all thine iniquities and no healeth all thy diseases must foretell us who redeemeth thy life from destruction who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies look at verse 5 who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that the youth is renewed like the eagles. You are glorifying God every time. That's how to keep the healing. You are showing gratitude to the Lord every time. That's how to keep the healing. And you are blessing the name of the Lord in the time of your devotion and prayer. That's how to keep the complete cure. And that's how your health, your life is renewed day by day. And it's renewed like the eagles in First John chapter chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 18. First John chapter 5, reading from verse 18, we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. He does not continue to sin. The old practice of sin, the old lifestyle of sinning, he abandons that. I'm a new creature now. I'm in Christ now. And if any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. Old things are past away and behold all things have become new any new creature there i said any new creature there let me see your hand i hear your voice any any new creature there the lord will keep you away from sin away from satan away from all the pollutions of society and a new life you will live for the rest of your life in jesus name we know we know we know by experience we know by the touch of the lord in our lives we know that whosoever is born of god sinneth not but he that is begotten of god keepeth himself that's how they catch their healing that's how they catch their complete cure. That's how they catch the power of God in their lives. Keep us himself and that wicked one, his name is Satan, his name is the devil, his name is the destroyer, that that wicked one touches him not. Amen. Amen. He will not touch you. Amen. You will not lose your healing. You will not lose anything, whatever the Lord has given to you in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number two. Now, point number two is uh, the considerate provision of food through his care. He didn't only give um, healing. He gave food because that was for their strength. And we're looking at three things here. Number one, number one, the food at the foundation of health and happiness. Number two, the food of faith for holding, keeping our healing. Number three, the food of fitness. Fitness. You know, you can ask any athlete. What kind of food they eat because they have to keep feet for the race and you can ask any achiever how they achieve they have to keep feet for the achievement and then you ask the people who are on their way to heaven they have to keep feet through holiness for heaven number three the food of fitness in holiness for heaven let's look at number one here number one here is the food at the foundation of health and happiness the lord said 
They've been with me now for three days. I don't want to send them away fasting and fainting. And then they did not have the strength for the journey back home. And food is the foundation of health. I want you to look at Acts chapter 14, verse 17. Acts chapter 14, verse 17. Nevertheless, he let not himself without witness in that he did good, talking about God, and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons. Why? Filling our hearts with food and gladness. The hungry person is not a happy person generally. The one that lacks appropriate food, convenient food for his life, lacks gladness. And so the foundation of our happiness and our health is the provision of food that God gives unto us in Acts chapter 27. Reading from verse 33, Acts 27, verse 33. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat to each food, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried and continued fasting, and have taken nothing. They were in a storm. And because of the storm, they became so afraid, fearful, that they couldn't eat anything. First day, second day, seventh day, tenth day, until this fourteenth day. There are people when they have lost a relative, a loved one, because of that loss, and because of that storm in their lives, they, they lose appetite that they don't have. The food is there, but they cannot eat. And Paul, the apostle, is saying by the Spirit of God, this is the 14th day. As you have continued fasting, and you have taken nothing. And it was beseeching them, pleading with them, that they must eat. Why? Look at verse 34. In verse 34, wherefore, I pray you, I plead with you to take some food, some meat, for this is for your health. Take some food, take some meal, take some meat, for this is for your health. For there shall not any air fall from the head of any of you. And somebody says, Amen. Amen. That's why He provides food for us. And we eat the appropriate food at the appropriate time so that we can keep healthy. Look at number two here. Number two, the food of faith for holding our healing. There is a food. For the stomach. That's the one I spoke about now. There is the food of faith. Look at Matthew chapter 4 verse 4. In Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 it says but he answered and said it is written man shall not live by bread alone. The natural, normal physical food for the belly. There's life beyond the body, beyond the belly. It says, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Why? Look at Romans chapter 10, reading from verse 17. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, the faith to be saved. Cometh by what you hear. The faith by which you are healed. Cometh by what you hear. The faith for your deliverance. It cometh and it is concretized by the word you hear. So then, faith 
commence by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now you have a body, you feed the body with food. And how many times do you eat every day? Now you have a soul, you have a spirit, and it's faith that builds up the strength of your soul and the strength of your spirit. How many times do you take the word of God in the week? Do you only take it on Monday? Or maybe you are not even there on Monday. Or do you only take it on Thursday? Maybe you are not even there on Thursday. Do you only take it on Sunday? If you eat like that once Monday, once Thursday, once Sunday, and then you miss out some Thursdays, you miss out some Mondays, you even miss out some Sundays. How will, you, how will it be if your body did not have the regular feeding and sustenance by the bread that feeds your body? Now the food of faith, we need to take that every time. You take it in church and when you get back home, you go over those references that were learned. Open your Bible because faith cometh by Hearing and hearing by the word of God. Job chapter 23. I'm reading from verse 12. In Job chapter 23, verse 12, neither have I gone back from the commandment of his leaves. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. I have esteemed, exalted, lifted up. I have valued the word of his mouth more than my necessary food. That's what builds up your faith. And when your faith is built up, you're able to keep your healing. You're able to keep all the provisions and all the goodness of God that they are showered upon your life. Number three here. Number three is the food for fitness. The food for fitness. Any athlete will tell you. You see them, how they, uh, they are fit for the race. You know what they do? They eat at the appropriate time. They sleep at the appropriate time. They exercise at the appropriate time. If they were only eating and eating, and they were lying on the bed every time, no exercise, the food will deposit a lot of fat in their body. They will not be fit for the race they were to run. And if they were sitting in front of the television for hours every day and just looking at television, 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 about uh, on the average, they tell us in the world, some people spend 19 hours a week watching television. It's not, number one, they're watching something polluting. Number two, they're just sitting down there and their body is not getting the proper exercise. But as you eat, you sleep well, eat at the right time, and you exercise normally. Then you're fit for whatever it is you are called to do. Actually, the rhythm of your eating and the rhythm of your sleeping and the rhythm of your exercise also affects your brain. Makes your brain to be sharp. Makes your brain to have retentive memory. But if you eat and then you don't do all these other things, it weakens the brain, it weakens the body, and it makes you unfit for what you need to do in life. Number three now is the food for fitness in holiness for heaven. We're looking at John chapter 6. And I'm reading from verse 27. It says, labor not for the meat which perisheth. Don't let all your concentration 
all your life, all your commitment be to the physical food. It says, but labor for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you for him as God the Father sealed. Verse 63. In verse 63, it is the spirit, the quickness. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, their spirit and they are life. That makes you feed for heaven. The words of Christ. You take that to heart. You believe that. You act on that. You behave that. That word, it makes you feed for heaven. In Galatians chapter 2, reading from verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, we're looking at verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. The old man crucified with Christ. The selfish life crucified with Christ. The depraved life crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. First Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 2. In First Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 2, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. The emphasis of the scripture is that you as a newborn babe or those who have been converts to the Lord, disciples of the Lord for a long time, you do not allow activity, profession, day-to-day -day running of your life and your family and your business to take you away from his word that you desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. Verse 9, in verse 9, it tells us, but we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. Not a sinful nation, church. Not a depraved nation, church. Not a selfish, self-centered nation, church. The church is a nation unto the Lord, a nation within a larger nation, a little circle within a bigger circle, and it's an holy nation, a peculiar people, that he should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Look at First Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 3. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us unto a lively hope. Amen. Amen. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And then in verse 4, it says, To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Reserved in heaven for me. Are you there? Are you going to be there? Praise the Lord, you'll be there. But that inheritance is a search in heaven for you. Look at verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God through faith. That's why the word of God is very important. Because faith, uh, the word builds faith in your life. And it says we're kept by the power of God. Through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. How are we going to get to that heaven where the inheritance is laid up for us? 
that same chapter, look at verse 14. First Peter chapter 1, verse 14. It says, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. Then in verse 15, but as see which has called you is holy. So be ye holy in all manner of conversation. In verse 16, because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. That's the holiness that prepares us and gets us to heaven follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall save the Lord blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God the food the word that prepares us makes us feed in holiness for life on earth and for eternal life in heaven. Let's come to point number three now. Point number three, the composite health plan for all saints under his covenant. Composite. And man is a composite personality. We have body, we have soul, we have spirit. By our body, we're able to contact the world around us. Our eyes, our ears, our hands, our feet, our smell. Every part of the body is made so that we can contact our society. The people around us, the soul. The soul is the part of force that feels when you feel sad, sorrowful, glad, happy, joyful, that's your soul. That's what the psalmist said. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Because of the dejection and the rejection and the sadness and the sorrow that brings uh, that kind of sinking feeling uh, in the soul that that's what makes us to contact ourselves we're conscious of ourselves i feel so i know i am i'm joyful so i know i am i'm excited it's my soul that makes me conscious of myself and personality now the spirit as the deep speaketh unto the deep, is the spirit by which we contact God. Our hands cannot contact God. Our eyes cannot contact God. It's the, the deep thing in our spirit that we sense the presence of God. We sense the goodness of God. It's in our spirit we have the witness of the Holy Ghost that God is and that we are his children. And he gives us health for the body, health for the soul, and health for the spirit. And look at uh, Psalm 67, and I'm reading from verse 2. Psalm 67, verse 2, that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health saving health, saving health among all nations. And then in third John, only one chapter there, verse 2. Third John, reading from verse 2, Beloved, I wish, I pray, I desire, above all things, that thou mayest prosper, one, and be in health, two, even as thy soul prospereth, three, that's the composite, for the body, for the soul, for the spirit. The Lord will make you, keep you healthy. Amen. Amen. Three things. Number one, the promised healing for the sick body. Number two, the peaceful healing for the sin sick soul. Number three, the precious healing. For the seeking spirit. Look at number one. Number one, the promised healing for the sick 
body. It tells us in Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, and said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep, that's a secret, and keep, and do, and obey all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. The promised healing for the sick body. Chapter 23 of Exodus. Exodus chapter 23. And we're looking at verse 25. And ye shall serve the Lord your God. Amen. Amen. You will not serve the devil. Amen. You will not serve idols. Amen. You will serve the Lord your God. Amen. And ye shall serve the Lord your God. And ye shall bless thy bread Amen. and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Amen. Then in verse 26. And there shall nothing cast the young nor be barren in thy land. Amen. The number of thy days I will fulfill. Amen. I want you to come to Matthew now, chapter 8, reading from verse 7. Matthew chapter 8, verse 7, the promised healing for the sick body. Jesus says unto him, I will come and heal him. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. I didn't hear your amen there. In verse 16, Verse 16, when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed how many? And healed, I said how many? This afternoon, today, how many? And you are included. And he healed all that were sick. Verse 17. In verse 17, that it may be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Mark chapter 16, reading from verse 17. Mark 16. Verse 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Are the believers there? Online, the believers are there. Television, radio, every congregation, and at the Alpha location here, Undo people, are the believers there? These signs then shall follow you because you believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Verse 18. They shall take up serpents. You throw those serpents away. That serpent will not walk on your body anymore. And if they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, it says, And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them and confirming the word was signs following. Amen. 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 Look at number two here. Number two, there is the peaceful healing for the sin sake soul. When a soul is troubled, 
the soul traumatized, the soul tortured, the soul tormented that were come to the Lord. There had been no peace. There's no peace, says the Lord, unto the wicked. And when the soul is troubled like that, we we'll bring that soul as we we'll brought the body to the Lord, and the Lord healed the body. We we'll now bring the soul unto the Lord, and the sin sick soul is healed. We we'll come to Psalm 41, reading from verse 3. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of Anguish, languishing. Thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul. He wasn't sick in the body. He wasn't blind. He wasn't dead. He wasn't paralyzed. But he had a sin sick soul. A sick soul. A sorrowful soul, a disheartened, weakened soul. And it was so sad, it was like he couldn't do anything. The sorrow in the soul paralyzed all his efforts. And so he said, Oh Lord, I need healing for my soul. And he said, Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Look at Psalm 6. I'm reading from verse 2. Psalm 6, verse 2. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. Verse 3. In verse 3, my soul is also so vexed. But thou, O Lord, how long? In verse 4, it says, Return, O Lord, deliver my soul. There are times when the soul needs deliverance and healing. It says, Oh, save me by thy mercy's sake, for thy mercy's sake. Jeremiah chapter 31, we're reading from verse 11. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob, and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. When you are living in society, and then you have people who are stronger than you are, and they're shooting arrows, and they're making your life oppressed, and it's like you cannot live in freedom and in peace, and it affects your soul. It gives you the promise for the Lord as redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than you. All the powers that are stronger than you are, they'll come under your feet in Jesus' name. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord for wheat and for wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and uh, of the herd and their soul you see that and their soul shall be as watered garden uh, and they shall not sorrow anymore at all amen. great amen. amen the sorrow of the soul taken away and it says, I'll give them peace, I'll give them rest, I'll give them joy, I'll give them satisfaction in their soul, and their soul shall sorrow no more at all. In Luke chapter 4, reading from verse 18, Luke chapter 4, verse 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted. The broken hearted. It's not talking about the body now. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted. And to preach deliverance to the captives. And the recovering of sight to the blind. And to set at liberty them that are bruised. 
It was said your soul free this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three now, number three, the precious healing of the sinking, seeking spirit. In uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1, reading from verse 15. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 15. And Anna answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. You see that? And I wasn't uh, seeking the body, but now she said, High priest, Eli, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I poured out my soul before the Lord. In verse 16, it says, Count not thine handmaid, for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of, the, of my complaint and grief, have I spoken hitherto? Look at verse 17. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace. And I say to you this day, Go in peace. Yeah. The God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And in verse 18, and she said, Let my handmaid find grace. In thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad because the spirit had now been healed. The Lord will heal your soul, He will heal your spirit. That's what we refer to as inner healing and inner healing the healing of the inner man is as important as the healing of the body and as you come to the lord you look at yourself as the whole man the composite man your body your soul your spirit and if any part of your personality is injured troubled traumatized sorrowful, disheartened, weighed down, you bring everything to the Lord, and the Lord, as he heals your body, he will heal your soul. As he heals your soul, he will heal your spirit. Psalm 147, I'm reading from verse 3. Psalm 147, verse 3, he heals the broken in heart. Broken in body, he heals them. Broken in bones, he heals them. Broken in the heart, he heals the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. Then in verse 4, it says, He telleth the number of the stars, he calleth them all by their names. And then in verse 5, it says, great is our Lord, and of great power is understanding is infinite. The Lord will heal you through and through. Hosea chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 4. Hosea chapter 14, reading from verse 4. It says, I will heal their backsliding. You see that? When somebody has backsliding, he has gone away from the path of righteousness. And then he's in the far country. He comes to himself. He says, I'm suffering here. I'm sorrowful here. And many of my, the hired servants of my father, they're well taken care of. And I feel the reproach and the agony of backsliding here. Then the Lord said, I'll heal the backslider too of the backsliding. I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. For my anger is turned away from him. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, Ephraim shall say, What 
have I to do any more with idols? I have heard him and observed him. I am like a green fir tree. From me is thy fruit found. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, who is wise? And he shall understand these things prudent, and he shall know them, for the ways of the Lord are right, and the just shall walk in them, but the transgressors shall fall therein. You will not fall therein. You'll be the wise understanding. There's healing for the body, there's healing for the soul. There's healing for your spirit. Third John chapter 1 verse 2. In Third John chapter 1, reading from verse 2, Beloved, I wish, I pray, I desire. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. Anybody there? Yeah. Now, how do we prosper? If our brain is not in good health, if our eyes are not in good health, if our ears are not in good health, if our hands are not strong, strong to hold and strong to work, not in good health, if we feel any pain, any part of the body, how do we make progress? It says, I wish above all things that thou Prosper, thou mayest prosper. If there is sorrow in the heart, if there is heartache, and if the, if the wounded spirit is carrying a burden that is greater than our health, our strength can hold. How do we prosper if our heart is broken, if the tears are flowing, if internally we're, dis we're disjointed and disorganized because of the problem of the soul and the spirit? Everything needs to come under the healing power of the Lord. Then we will have the realization, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Amen? Amen. In health. Amen. Amen? You sleep and you sleep well. Not that you keep awake and you are counting all the planks on the ceiling in the night. You wake up, uh, you know, like you sleep one hour, you wake up, you're not able to sleep again. And then you go to the toilet, you come back, you're not able to sleep again. And you're thinking of, you know, what happened at that time, what happened at that time. And thoughts are coming in your heart. I you're not a peaceful man. In the day, there is no peace. In the night, there is no peace. You're not healthy. You may say, I'm not blind, I'm not deaf, I'm not uh, dumb. You may say, my legs are not broken, but you can't sleep at night. You can't enjoy the day, you can't enjoy the night. That's what the Lord is coming to you, and He wants to give you total healing. Amen. Complete healing. Composite healing in your body, in your soul, and in your spirit. You have uh, something that happened during the day. And then uh, you keep on remembering that. Why did I say that? Why did I do that? Why did I go there? Why did I touch that? Why did I drink that? Why did I smoke that? And guilt and condemnation will keep your body and will keep your eyes open and awake. That's what will bring to the Lord so that total healing, complete healing. He heals the body, he heals the soul, and then he heals the heart. Beloved, you're becoming beloved of the Lord. Am I talking to somebody there? Yes, you are the one I'm talking to. You'll be a beloved of the Lord. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. Your soul will prosper. 
a prospering soul. What kind of soul is like is that? He calls the name of the Lord, and the Lord says, Here am I, what do you want? That soul is prospered. He reads the word of God. He has understanding. He has revelation. He has inspiration. That's a prospered soul. He asks anything from above, and the Lord gives, and then he goes to his place of work. Every door is opening. Everywhere he goes, and people are standing there and they're saying, we have been expecting your coming. And he comes in every time to the blessing of God. And his head does not lack ointment. And his voice does not lack assurance. His heart does not lack the joy of the Lord. And the Lord is with him every time that soul is prospering. And I pray the total prosperity provided for you, for the body, for the soul, for the spirit, will be granted unto you in Jesus' name. Today, as you pray, God will answer. Amen. All the sadness the Lord will take away. And the joy of the Lord will be your strength in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy? Amen. Happy? Amen. Healthy? Amen. Holy? Amen. Heavenly minded. You'll soon get there. Why don't you stand up and tell the Lord, oh Lord, I'm here. I want everything you have provided. And I'm going to have health in my body. Health in my soul. Health in my spirit. Health today. Health henceforth. Health all the way through. And fitness for heaven through holiness. I'll be there. You'll be there in Jesus' name. We have heard the Lord 